Last week, the South China Morning Post reported another record in cracking the RSA encryption on a quantum computer. This isn't the first time they've reported such progress. How serious is this really and what does it mean for Bitcoin? Let's have a look. Quantum computers can theoretically perform certain calculations much faster than conventional computers. One of these calculations is decoding RSA, named for Rivers, Charmier and Edelman. It's a security protocol that has been and is still widely used on the internet for secure transactions. Even though plans are underway to switch to different encryption protocols that can't be cracked by quantum computers, Intelligence organizations are almost certainly sitting on a lot of data they've collected but can't read. If RSA was cracked, all that information would suddenly become readable, resulting in God knows what political tensions. This event has been dubbed Q-Day or the Quantum Apocalypse. Bitcoin doesn't use RSA, but the encryption protocol it uses is also one that can be cracked by a quantum computer in principle. If that became possible, then Bitcoin were no longer secure and could be stolen by anyone in possession of a powerful enough quantum computer. Two years ago, the South China Morning Post reported that Chinese researchers had supposedly found a magnificent improvement to decryption algorithms that would allow quantum computers to hack national secrets within the next few years. Turned out that the paper confused two different algorithms and didn't show any advantage for decryption. Then in October last year, the same publication reported that a group of Chinese researchers researchers had found a way to break military-grade encryption on a D-Wave quantum computer. This groundbreaking news spread wide and far, not least because the relevant publication was not linked to in the article and later turned out to be in Chinese. The paper was actually a protocol for improving a quantum calculation of a different algorithm. Stan Kaminsky, writing for the cybersecurity company Kapersky, called it a quantum of lies. We've seen a lot of press releases lately about how Chinese quantum computers are catching up with those of Google and IBM. Last week, the South China Morning Post again reported that Chinese researchers may have found a new path for encryption research and asks for how much longer is our data safe. Chinese researchers seem to have factorized 80-bit RSA and have even reported to have factorized 2048 bits in a paper titled A First Successful Factorization of RSA 2048 Integer by D-Wave Quantum Computer. How alarming is all this really? Well, D-Wave is a special type of quantum computer called an annealer built and sold by a Canadian company. It's not a universal quantum computer like what Google and IBM are trying to build. And these researchers use what's called a hybrid algorithm that's a combination of a classical and a quantum algorithm to crack the RSA code. The most commonly used RSA encryption uses more than 2000 bits. The record for breaking RSA on a supercomputer is 2000 700 CPU years for 829 bits. The Chinese paper that says they cracked 2048 bits actually did this for a specific type of number, one with two prime factors that differ only by two bits and their code only works for this case. The general case with 80-bit RSA, which the Chinese researchers say they cracked on a quantum computer, can also be cracked within seconds on a state-of-the-art laptop. This this generally puts an interesting perspective on the idea that they broke the 80-bit encryption with a hybrid approach on a D-Wave quantum computer because they didn't even need the quantum part. That said, the threat from breaking cryptographic protocols with quantum computers is real. But it's far in the future because by all current estimates, it'll take more qubits than other applications in quantum chemistry or material science. Which brings up the interesting question of why do the Chinese make such a big deal of their quantum computers? I can't help but think of the ancient Chinese strategy, make a sound in the east, then strike in the west, 
Maybe it's a ploy to get other countries to waste money on quantum computing while China's pulling ahead in AI and semiconductor production. The Information Technology and Innovation Foundation projects that in the next few years China will become the global leader in microchip production. The Chinese company Huawei just rolled out a microchip, especially suited for AI, that rivals NVIDIA's in terms of computing power, though it reportedly takes up considerably more power. The Chinese government champions free trade and presents itself as a source of stability and certainty. I just hope I won't have to learn Chinese. English is already bad enough. I'm not the trusting kind. I don't like it if companies keep track of my whereabouts and God knows what else. That's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN is an app that makes your internet connection ultra secure. You install it on your phone or laptop and use it to create a safe connection. With NordVPN, no one can spy on your data or track your whereabouts. And it also comes with a threat protection that keeps you safe from malware, trackers and malicious ads. It doesn't just protect your privacy, it also makes your life easier. You know how some content is blocked for users in certain locations? For example, for example, if you're in Europe, a lot of pages in the United States have become inaccessible in recent years. That can get really annoying. But well, NordVPN has more than 5,000 servers all over the world. Just pick a server in the United States. Problem solved. You can make use of our special offer if you use the link nordvpn.com/sabine or the coupon code Sabine. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.